Right. These, all these slides, um, Mark, are from the Acton High School workshop. This one gives an idea of the kind of space we'll need if we can get these mm. workshops off the ground. Basically, uh, working tops, tabletops that we can set up wax frames. We've got, we've got two tables and we've got the work surface over there, so I think it's limited. We've mm. got three, we've got that table over there as well. So it's yeah. quite a lot of, of table space. Right. If we go to the next well, that one. That needs floor space. We yeah, we can that. use floor space. Yeah, that's all right. Now that would mean um, maybe an older age group. We can do the traditional batik method, which is dip, dip dyeing. Possibly mm. use the sinks outside. Yes, we've got Just that. get some tubs. Yes, we need to get tubs. Right. We haven't got any of that. Another thing I wanted to discuss with you is um, putting together a kind of presentation pack. This is for a project I'm supposed to be doing in Ethiopia. It's supposed to be around December of this year. So I thought possibly we could use some of those slides. I don't know what you think. There's no problem there. We can have them printed up in a couple of days and they'll be really high quality too. Black art should not be viewed as a separate entity from the mainstream. By making it, insulating it only within uh, black communities is actually, uh, in a way, very derogatory, very negative, and certainly not contributing towards the progression of black artists in this community. One of the major influences on my work is actually th based on the Amerindian influences on my life. I come from Guyana which is in South America. And uh, the indigenous people of Guyana are the Amerindians. I feel they, like a lot of indigenous people of other countries, are at risk of being absolutely submerged in the cultures and lifestyles of the majority, ethnic majority. And a lot of their a lot of their skills are, are, are being forgotten. Um, a lot of their art forms are dying. Batik is not taken seriously as an art form by the art establishments in this country. Um, the main reason, I feel, is that art is still defined by European standards and the European traditions of uh, canvas, paint equals painting. The materials, the techniques are different in Batik but it has a, a, a history and a magnificent history as well dating back centuries and possibly it's uh, as old if not older than european art another major influence on my work has been, in fact, a rather traumatic experience, which was, uh, what, since in 1982. I found out that I had cancer, and uh, it, was, uh, it was very horrifying. It, and what it did to me at that point was actually 
made me feel there was this alien, rather ugly thing happening to my body. And uh, I got very involved then at looking at uh, cellular structures. And in actual fact, finding out that you know, that there was just this really amazing beauty in the smallest, most minute bit of bark or a flower, a leaf. I actually went through a process of just doing a lot of drawings and a lot of work based on cellular structures. Um, human tissue where I was sort of uh, seeing this horrific negative uh, view of cancer and cells, these abnormal cells. It was almost as a sort of healing or a therapeutic process. And it did help. It, it actually gave me a more positive approach to dealing with having to go into hospital, facing surgery, that sort of thing. I am very lucky in, in, in the sense of being able to do the work I want to do and I enjoy most and also having the support of my family. And uh, our friends, similarly, they are quite involved in projects I do and will visit workshops which I've been running. My husband as well. It has helped, I think, the fact that he is also involved in the creative arts. That, my God, and this big right hand is the property of the banana man. Banana day is me special day. I cut me stems and I on me way. Load up me donkey, leave the land, head down the hill to the banana stand. When the truck come wrong, I text a ride all the way down to the harbor side. That is the night when you tourist man would change your place with the banana, man. Yes, by God, I'm a big right on. I will live and die a banana, man. My great-great-great-grandparents migrated to Guinea-Bissau. And this kingdom was called Gabu Empire, the empire of Gabu in West Africa. But there came a disturbance, an Islamic disturbance, that brought down their kingdom. Being a Muslim doesn't completely mean that you are 100% dominated, that you forgot of your past culture. I started Batik um, in the Gambia. It was immediately when I completed my schooling in a secondary school. It became that um, I concentrated on Batik simply because it's a very high demand. And people were using it not only for pictural uses, but um, uh, making clothes out of them, um, bed covers, table covers, you know, door and window curtains, you know, etc.
it's quite easy to be able to do batik, especially the technique I deal with. You could be able to wash it when it is dirty, you know, stretch it up, hang it back to the place where it is. sort of referred to, you, you, you talked about the step, but you could... Uh, at the moment I'm thing. doing a youth and community mm -hmm. work, yeah, two year full time course. Have... I'll be completing it I this year. Too, yeah. I didn't qualify having a grant because of um, uh, my period of staying in this country. It's quite difficult in a way, but thanks God, because of the arts, I find it a little bit easy. I hope after the course, I might be in the community to serve the people, you know, which I think doesn't affect um, my profession as an artist in any form. Most of my pictures are either cultural, traditional, customary, or everyday doings. And sometimes I even like going into poetry, African poetry, making it into picture form, or proverbs to be changed into pictures, especially the wise sayings, African wise sayings. But it's more of culture in a way, so, um, because the basic reason is to communicate with the people. There's a lot of areas that people don't understand how people are living, you know, or how, how they are dealing with certain kind of, of situations. This batik is about the traditional life of people in West Africa. It's the whole community living together and uh, the household of this family is um, uh, the operator of this herbal hospital where people come to get herbal treatment. This baby here is having a treatment. You can see leaves on the back of the child. A woman sitting, taking care of the child, is the brother of the child. They depend mostly on fruits rather than meat or they are more of Habarios than omnivores. And there's a monkey here helping them to bring down the fruits. Here is the wife of this man, the first child of um, the Habar doctor. It's something traditional, it's a real story, it's a real picture. And uh, 
the picture is something that I've seen and uh, transform it into a picture instead of just having the the picture in my mind I transmit it now into the form of batik arts We have a large absence of work by black artists in any of the galleries in Britain. Part of that is to do with the racism that actually exists within these systems. And uh, what we have to do as black artists is challenge that and also let them know that these art forms do exist. In a sense, art is an um, expression which has been mystified over so many centuries that only those who feel that they've actually be been educated to know about how to practice it feel they're the ones who can practice it. And when you get a, a media like a uh, batik, it actually makes art more accessible to those who are not usually practicing art in any form. Let's get the brush mm -hmm. in your hand. Mm. Just dry, dip it Batik is a um, is a very peaceful media in the sense that you you're concentrating mm. on the use of wax, which does take a long time to put on to a piece of cloth, and then you're concentrating on using a number of different dye colors to actually put on your fabric. If you rush this work. When I've been doing workshops with a number of different types of groups with different abilities, including people with disabilities, and uh, it has actually proved to be a valuable tool in communicating not only ideas, but also communicating in such a way that the media actually helps people to relax, people to actually explore possibilities of their own creativity. Mm. Yeah, you've got a good choice of colours. The reason I've chosen to actually p convey a political message through portraiture is basically because A, there was a lack of portraiture of Asian people, of African people. And uh, what I try to do is to try and show through the expression of their faces, their eyes, their mouths, the strength which has come out through a number of the poses that some of the people have taken. I did a portrait of my family. And in that I've tried to show how they've actually had to immigrate from India to East Africa to, to Britain and then to Canada. And all that takes a lot of strength, a lot of um, energy out of people. For people to actually have culture reflecting them is a very important part of their identity and their, and their being.
This batik <coughs> is called The Hand That Rocked the Cradle and it's basically a composition made up from archive materials which were um, trying which is trying to show the the role of the British woman in uh, the colonial process in the Indian subcontinent. We have the usual figures of the soldiers um, but in this case we also have of a British woman who's lighting a, ca a cannon and in front of the cannon is a figure tied through which a cannon is going to be blown and this is the manner of execution of the Indian mutineers. When I exhibit my work or take it to a uh, school or give a slideshow to teachers or even when I uh, go and do run a workshop, I'm actually taking along a message, I'm taking along a technique, I'm taking along ideas and I'm also taking along all the research which is combined to produce that piece of work. Cracks in it. And the way that you fold it or crunch it out, you actually introduce small lines into it. And you push it, die into it, and you get the small lines appearing inside this colour. It's really necessary to be able to have the right skills to actually produce images of black people and Asian people. Because when I was at college, I really, in a sense, didn't even know how to draw the faces of Asian people and black people because all I'd do would draw European faces and put maybe a broad nose or curly hair or a ticker or an earring and that would have actually be enough to make it into a black or an Asian image. And what I'm trying to do now is to relearn all those processes, not stereotype things myself because it's necessary for people to understand that we have to have images of ourselves in contemporary life not stereotype it the way that people have done it in the past and use that as a way of explaining our presence here. So when I go to schools, when I go to colleges and they say, well, what is contemporary black art? Then we have examples of young black artists whose work can be seen and uh, that represents the only historical documentation which is present at the moment that describes our presence in this country and our lifestyles in this country.